In 1912, Judson Holman, his brother William Holman Sr., and their cousin Will McCarty formed the McCarty Holman Company, and within a few years, they had established a small chain of grocery stores in Jackson, Mississippi. Like most of their competitors, these stores offered credit and delivery services to customers whose food orders were assembled by clerks in each store. After World War I, food costs began to rise and it became difficult to collect from customers using credit. So McCarty Holman joined a growing number of grocers converting their stores to cash and carry. Experimenting with trends in a self-service store design popularized by the Memphis-based chain Piggly Wiggly. According to Holman, the name Jitney Jungle was a play on slang terms of the early 20th century. A jitney was a slang term for a nickel, and it echoed the firm's slogan and advertising emphasis on saving money. Save a nickel on a quarter. On April 19, 1919, the first self-service Jitney Jungle store opened on East Capitol Street in downtown Jackson, which was just down the street from a rival Piggly Wiggly store. Within a year, the new store had made more money than all the other McCarty Holman stores combined, and they were either quickly converted to Jitney Jungles or phased out altogether. In 1920, Piggly Wiggly filed a lawsuit against Jitney Jungle for patent infringement, claiming that it had exclusive rights to the cash and carry system. Finally, after Will McCarty proved that such a system pre-existed the founding of Piggly Wiggly, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of Jitney Jungle, which made their expansion efforts much easier. Jitney Jungle expanded from Jackson opening stores in other Mississippi towns, including Greenwood, Yazoo City, and Canton. The chain also fared pretty well during the Great Depression, in part because the cash and carry system did not strap it with credit charges its customers could not pay. Jitney Jungle opened its first true supermarket in Jackson in 1934, complete with a parking area to accommodate the growing number of customers arriving by car. The store was also groundbreaking, since it was the second Jitney to have air conditioning, and the first to have a women's restroom, both of which reflected the growing prominence of women as grocery shoppers. The partners calculated that 90% of their clients were women by 1946, and the company's gross sales had reached $7.5 million. Also in 1946, Jitney was finally incorporated. The move also named the three presidents' wives as vice presidents, which was in large part a tax strategy. But because Jitney's customers were 90% women, it was also a good public relations move. While the Jitney advertisements of the 1920s had stressed the bargains made possible by self-service, the new supermarkets of the 1950s were designed to promote the comfort and convenience of female customers. Holman described the store as a super social institution where clerks were required to wear ties and women not only bought groceries but also socialized and shopped with friends. In 1954, after years of unsatisfactory arrangements with independent bakeries, Jitney bought its very own bakery in Columbia, Tennessee, and began making its own bread and other baked goods. This was in direct response to what their customers wanted. But the company was less enthusiastic about another craze of the 1950s, the trading stamp. For a time, Jitney Jungle held out even in the face of pressure from customers who demanded them. But finally in 1958, 
Jitney Jungle gave in and began issuing them. After Judd Holman died in 1950 and William Holman Sr. died in 1962, the family business was passed to the next generation and William Holman Jr. became president of Jitney Jungle. Under the younger Holman's leadership, Jitney expanded from a chain of 32 stores, all located in Mississippi, to a southeastern regional chain of almost 200 stores in six states. Through the 1970s and 1980s, growth was slow. Although Jitney had opened a mega discount food store in Jackson, Mississippi with a pharmacy and a gas station, the chain couldn't find financial backing to expand any further. In 1996, the Holman and McCarty families decided to sell their chain of grocery stores to an investment firm in New York for $400 million. Now with financial support, Jitney began a rapid expansion that included the acquisition of the mobile-based Dell Champs chain of grocery stores. The expansion required major renovations to stores, which greatly increased the debt the company was carrying. By 1999, Jitney Jungle filed for bankruptcy protection. In early 2001, Jitney Jungle Stores of America sold 125 stores to Winn-Dixie, and this marked the end of an era for loyal Jitney Jungle shoppers. After rebranding the stores as Winn-Dixie's, by 2005, they were closing many of those same stores. The Holman and McCarty family built Jitney Jungle over the course of 80 years. It took only four years to bring it down. The grocery store with the odd name had a history that conjures up memories of childhood for many growing up in the 1950s and 1960s. Maybe Jitney Jungle wasn't in your town, but you may certainly have your own fond memories of shopping with your family at the local grocery store. <laughs>